to welcome everybody and welcome Tiger Woods, tournament host of the Genesis Invitational, as we all know. Also, Tiger, you, we all know that your, your TGR Foundation benefits from this event this week. But I think we're all curious as to kind of what other aspects went into your decision of trying to, uh, you know, actually competing here this week. Well, I, I, the, the plan was to play. Uh, whether or not this body would listen to me or not uh, was the main question. And I, I've been, as I told some of you guys that were down at, at the Hero, uh, and Father Son, I, I mean, I, I can do the Ranger Rick thing. And so I can hit golf balls and do all that stuff. It's rather what I have the endurance in my leg. And we've been pushing it pretty good and um, been able to recover each and every day, which is great. So. I'm excited about to be able to compete and play and play here at Riviera where basically it all started. So uh, I'm excited to get out there and play and play tomorrow and uh, get, get a nice little taste and feel for it. Um, a little colder than I thought. <laughs> so I'm getting used to that and uh, get ready for Thursday. Before we take questions, just you mentioned where it all started back in the mm. two. You hit that opening tee shot. Everybody saw that video. It's everywhere. Just when you look at uh, now and the young kids from your foundation being involved, can you just talk to the progression of your foundation and, and the situation uh, where it is now? Yeah, just to have our, some of our, our attendees of our learning lab to be able to come out here and experience this and to see how their lives have been impacted because of this event, uh, because of the support from Genesis and everyone here and the, the media and and. Uh, all of our STEM programs all benefit from this event. And to have the kids that have watched this event have uh, been through our STEM programs to be able to have the ability to come out here and look at the best players in the world play golf, uh, but also showcase you know, what you know, their confidence and what they have developed into. Um, and some of the conversations that I don't know, some of the players have had with our, our past attendees of, from the Learning Lab it's, it's incredible. It's inspiring. Terrific. Okay. We'll just make sure that everybody, if you have a question, just raise your hand and we'll try and get through as many as we can. We'll start with Jeff in the back. Uh, Tiger, two things. Could you just a little more um, specificity yeah. on the, um, what it is physically that you needed to kind of overcome to be able to play? And yeah. then uh, on a lighter note, um, LeBron breaking the scoring record last week. I'm curious if you have a, uh, thoughts on that and any golf uh, record that's sort of an equivalent of, uh, of the uh, regular season points uh, title. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as far as um, the recovery, is more of my, my ankle. Uh, whether or not I can recover from day to day. Uh, the leg is better than it was last year, uh, but it's, it's my ankle. And so... Being able to uh, have it recover from day to day and, and meanwhile still stress it, uh, but have the recovery and also have the strength development at the same time. Uh, it's been an a intricate little balance that we've had to dance, um, but it's gotten so much better uh, the last couple months, and uh, I'm excited to go out there and compete and play with these guys. And I would not have put myself out here if I didn't think I could beat these guys and, and win the event. Um, that's my mentality, and if I wasn't ready to win at this level, I know I am very rusty. Um, but I've come off rusty situations before, and I've done well, and uh, I've had to utilize a lot of those tactics in practice and, and build up. And plus, also, I know this, this golf course. Uh, I know I haven't had a lot of success on this golf course, but I, I knew what to practice for, uh, shots to hit um, while I was at home getting ready. And as far as the LeBron record, it's what he accomplished is <clears throat> is absolutely incredible of just the durability, the consistency, and the longevity. I never thought, I mean, I grew up watching Kareem here. I never saw him play at Milwaukee, but um, he was the cap. You know, that's all I remember, the, the Showtime Lakers, and watching Cap run down there with the goggles and hitting the sky hook and... Um, that record we never thought would be surpassed. Uh, but what LeBron is doing, but, but also the, the amount of minutes he's playing, no one's ever done at that age and what he's done and be able to play all five positions. And uh, that's never been done before. And, and then at this level for this long. And then as far as our equivalent to that, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you look at maybe me and Sam uh, at 82. Um, 
Yeah, it, it, it takes it takes a career to get to those numbers, and uh, that's how I, I I think probably is best how you look at it. Go to this mic here. Hi, what did the PNC tell you about the state of your game and how to impact your prep for playing in another in another event? You know, as you watched at, at PNC, I, I was able to play on the cart and hit shots and, and do whatever I wanted, but I just had the the endurance in my ankle. And so we've been working on that and uh, getting it to where I can still I can still hit shots, uh, but it's the walking endurance that's it's hard. Um, that's something that we've had to work on and walk on distances, the beach, and just basically stress stress it out, but also be able to recover by the next day and see how it is inflammation wise, and then keep practicing. And uh, I may have overdone it a couple times here and there, uh, but here I am. Yes, sir. Hi, Tiger. Um, being from Norway, I just had to ask you about uh, a guy who has done really well at your events, Victor Hovland. He's mm. done well here. He's done really well at Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Just uh, your thoughts on him as a player and as a person and how far he can go? The sky's the limit for Victor. Uh, the way he, he drives it, um, he, doesn't, he doesn't really have any you know, weaknesses in the game. I mean, initially it was probably a short game in putting, but that's, that's turned around. Um, he's done some really good work with that. Uh, but just the way he strikes the golf ball. I know he's not one of the one of the longer bombers out there, but you just look at how many fairways he hit and how many good iron shots he hits. And that's going to take up a long way. And then his fitness. I mean, he, he works very hard at at getting uh, explosiveness and endurance, and he's able to play. And he's, I think he's just getting started, and, and the sky's the limit for him. Okay, we'll go to Kira in the back row. Hi, Tiger. Um, you just said that you wouldn't tee it up in the tournament if you didn't think that you could win. From the PNC until now, could you just take us through your lifestyle and your day-to-day -to, -day to actually get yourself to that point where you can sit here and confidently say that? I hit balls um, basically almost every day. Um, I chip and putt, and I've got a, a neat little practice facility in my, my backyard, so I can do a little bit of short game work there and a little bit of progression. And I've gone up to medalists and hit balls, and I've... I've walk the golf course and I've played and then I'll play I'll hop in a cart um, when it gets a little tired and then it's just gone from a few holes to nine holes to on the back nine and then to 18 holes and go back home practice uh, so it, it's just a, a build up and it has built is built up fantastic to get to this point and then after this event, we'll analyze it and see what we need to do to get ready for Augusta. We'll go to Jim in the back, and then we'll get that mic up the front. Yeah, Jim Hill, good to be, How are you, man? Good to see I'm you again. I'm very good, Jim. Good to see you. You've always had a thirst for knowledge, whether it is about golf or just the game of life. What have you learned about yourself over the last year since your accident that maybe you didn't know before? Well, I think that I've had an incredible support staff and people that have... Uh, really have helped me get to this point. Um, it's been hard physically, um, as we all know, but I've had just, just great people around me. My, my, my training staff has allowed me to get to this point. I've gotten stronger, more, more pliable. I've got more endurance. Um, and then just the great friendships I've had, even on the tour, these guys texting me and egging me on and the banter back and forth and this incredible support. And I would never have gotten to this point and made it back to this point without their support. And then we'll go to Dan on this side. Tiger, have you walked 72 holes four days in a row? No. Mm -hmm. And do you ever see a... Scenario? This year? Yeah. No. And then... <laughs> now you've done it before. Um, and do you see a scenario when it's not so touch and go, when you might be able to depend on the leg, or do you think that it will be this kind of day-by-day -day thing forever? As, I, as I've been saying to you guys, it, I, I'm not going to be playing a full schedule, so i got to pick and choose my events and how many events I'm going to play. And I alluded to you know, last year, it's going to be probably the, the majors and maybe a couple more. And uh, I'd, would I like to play more? Yes. Um, will it allow me to? I don't know. And I have to be realistic about that. So being realistic about the, the recovery and the training and, whoop, sorry. It's not me calling it. Sorry, it's an alarm. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> We've all done it. <clears throat> um, you know, it's just, it's just about the, I, I know I'm not going to be playing, you know, a, a full schedule and I got to pick and choose and, you know, what I'm going to be playing in and it's going to be very limited. And so I would put all my energy into those events. 
Okay, we'll go to Todd right here. Tiger, anticipating the Masters, um, it's going to be the first time that you're uh, in a room, in a group with live players. Wondering what that anticipation is like for you as far as how you may handle it what your demeanor is going to be when you're around them? You know, the, that's a great question because I don't know because I haven't been around them. Some of the players out here have. And, you know, for instance, you know, Rory's at, you know, in Dubai, you know, with some of those players. And, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that reaction is going to be. Um, I know that some of our, our friendships have certainly taken a, a different path. Uh, but we'll see when, when all that transpires. Uh, that is, you know, still a couple months away. Champions dinner may be uncomfortable. Would you anticipate it being uncomfortable? Yeah, the champions dinner is going to be obviously something that's uh, talked about. You know, we, we as a whole um, need to honor Scotty. You know, Scotty's the winner. It's his dinner. And so making sure that Scotty gets honored correctly, uh, but also realizing just the, the nature of you know, what has transpired and the people that who have, have left and um, just where our situations are, uh, either legally, uh, emotionally, um, there's a lot there. And we'll go to the Ryan in the back. Tiger, over the... Over the past month, Tom Brady retired. Now Aaron Rodgers is considering it. Uh, different sports, obviously, but mm -hmm. can you relate or understand their plight at all, where they're walking away not necessarily because their physical skills have diminished, but because they feel like they don't have anything more to give? Yeah, I, I, I didn't think that I would... There was, there was a touch and go where I'd be back after my, my, my back fusion. Um, I didn't know if I was going to walk again after that, and I came back and had a nice little run. Um, same thing with this leg. You know, I didn't know if I was able to play again, and I, I played you know, three majors last year. So, um, yes, it, when you get a little bit older and you get a little more banged up, you know, just you're not as invincible as you, you once were, and that's just the reality of all of us just aging. Um, those are contact sports. I mean, I, I don't know how they've they've played or Tom playing as long as he did, and the level that he played at was was phenomenal. I mean, we, we just have to just look at him as an outlier of how great that was. And you know, I remember as a kid growing up watching John Elway speak and just cry that I can do it, but my body won't allow me to do it anymore. Um, he won you know, the last two Super Bowls, but he just could not physically do it anymore. And, and that's, I've gotten to that point a couple of times where you, you kind of think about it, but in our sport, I mean, there's no, no contact. Um, I don't have 300 pound guys fall on top of me. It's just a matter of shooting the lowest score. Um, so it, we, we have the ability to you know, pick and choose and play a little bit longer. And you know, we've seen you know, my, my hero, Arnold Palmer, like all of us, hell, he played in 50 straight Masters. Okay, <laughs> 50 straight. I'm not even 50 years old yet. And he played in 50 straight Masters. Um, and then you look at Gary Player, who played in the 51 Masters. I mean, that, that, we're different sports. Doug and then Dylan. Do you feel grateful to be here? To yes. Be able to play? Okay. Yes. I, I figured as much. But at what point in your in your career did you start to feel grateful to to be out here? I'm not suggesting you ever took mm. it for granted, but you know what I mean, injury wise. Uh, probably. You know, and I had some knee surgeries early on in in my career, but nothing like what I experienced with, with my back. And when my back went. Um, Man, those were tough, tough surgeries and tough rehabs, and um, I could power through, you know, my knee and the, the meniscus and the, no ACL, and I, I, I could power through that, but I could never power through my back, and that's when I started realizing that the the mortality of of this game and just sports in general, and you know, I didn't think I was I was immortal, you know, just what we all think as athletes, but there comes a point in time when you know, a couple of my friends in the NFL was when you are you, you become afraid to get hit. You know, you take that one little flinch of I don't want to get hit. Well, when I had my back, I didn't want to hit certain shots um, because I made it up on the ground, and so that was that was tough. The second thing I wanted to ask about are, are expectations, which you can ignore, but they're they're still out there. 
So if you go back to like early 2000s, where if you went a month without winning, you were in a you were in a slump. Mm -hmm. The expectations were that great. To later in your career, where the expectations from some were you'd never win again. Mm -hmm. Which one do you enjoy hearing more? Well, I look at that me personally. I I I, I looked at the fact that I haven't won in three years. So there you go. Dylan, go ahead. Yeah, Tiger, we're a couple uh, designated events into the, the new look PSGA yes. Tour, and I was just curious how you think it's going and, and how different you think it'll feel throughout the year. Yeah, you know, we've had three already, and I, I think it's been received. It, it's, there's, there's obviously mixed emotions about it. Um, but from a, a marketing side of it and from the tour side of it and the future of our sport, it's been very positive. And we need to keep going with it and keep staying aligned and keep progressing and making it better. Uh, we need to produce the best product we possibly can to sell to all the viewerships. Um, and, and there's so many different distractions out there now. Um, you, there's so many different options that you have now. And so it's about us creating the, the best product so that we have more eyes on it. Um, we have more stars. Uh, people want to come out and either come out and watch, this game, watch the game of golf, participate, um, either on social media or the different streaming platforms. Just the fact that they're able to, you know, watch our sport. So we, in order to do that, we have to create the best product, and that's what we're trying to do. Mixed emotions. Have you gotten a chance to talk to to guys that have different types of emotions? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it runs. It runs the gamut, and um, from top players to players who are, you know, obviously you have injuries or the fact that you have guys are, are, are journeymen or back and forth. Yes, I've, I've talked to the whole gamut. And there's, as I said, there's mixed emotions. But at the end of the day, we're trying to create the best product. And how do we do that? Um, that's what we're, we're trying to do and we're still figuring it out. And we have a lot of the top players that are aligned uh, since the Delaware meeting. And we were trying to create that atmosphere of across the board and understand that players need to be able to have access and, and ability to, to play at these elevated events and how do we do that uh, we want to create the next stars um, I was lucky enough to get a sponsor exemption here at 16 years old and so is that possible in that, that new model uh, we need to create opportunities like that um, so you know I, I look the look back and then I got lucky and I was able to play in this event, Byron Nelson asked me to play in his event. Um, Arnold asked me to play in his event. So I got those opportunities very early in my career. And you know, we don't want the next stars to not have those opportunities. I'm going to go to the front here with my... Uh, Tiger, is the plantar fasciitis an issue at all in the foot? Yes. As much of a... No, it's not. Not as much. No, but it's better. Okay. And with the, the Live Talk kind of came to a head here last year. Looking back over the last year with what the PGA Tour has done, the things you just mm -hmm. talked about, is live more of a threat, less of a threat? Well, it's been a very, how can I say, the, the past year since, if, if you go back to this week at Genesis last year to where it's at now, we all have to say it's been tur very turbulent. Um, we never would have expected the game of golf to be in this situation. Um, but it is. That's the reality. And we're, we're, I was alluding to you, trying to create the best product. Obviously, they're a co competitive organization trying to create their best product they possibly can. And we're trying to create the best product that we think the future of the golf, how it should be played. Um, how do we do that? We're still working on that. And we have so many of the top players that are aligned. And how do we support our world partners in, in the DP World Tour? Um, we need to have our top players understand that we need to play around the world and, again, create the best product possible. And it's, it's, an, it's been an ebb and flow. I mean, it really has. And it's been difficult. There's, there's no lie. I mean, you've seen our, our ambassador, Rory, go through it. I mean, it's been tough on him. And, but it's been exceptional. He's been exceptional. Be able to go through all that. I've been with him on all those conference calls and his, his side meetings, and for him to go out there and play and win, uh, it's been incredible. We'll take one from Bob in the middle and we'll cross it out. Tiger, along these same lines with the designated events, obviously this whole thing came together very quickly uh, from last fall to now. There, a lot of things had to happen to make this work, the scheduling and everything. 
One of the things going forward that's being discussed, at least there's rumblings about, is making some of these limited fields, no cuts. Uh, it sounds like the invitationals would be on the, you know, on the docket mm -hmm. for that. Um, where do you stand on that? And also, would you have a say in it for this tournament? We are in the process of figuring all that out. I mean, it's been a variety of different models, different opinions, um, trying to figure out what is the best product and competitive environment and uh, what we should do going forward. Um, yes, limited fields, what's the number? Cuts, yes or no? What's the number? What do we go to? Um, how many players are playing the event? Um, it, there, there is, okay, what is the the ability to get into the designated events. Uh, where does that, wh how, do, how, does, how is Jay able to sell our, our product to all the different sponsors across the board? It, there's so much give and take, and uh, it's, it's still ongoing. I mean, it, it, it really has. It's, it's been difficult. Um, we've, a lot of the players have been very forthright, which is great. It's what it should be. Um, we are a players-run organization. And so, yes, we should have the voice and the ultimate say, but we're trying to help our commissioner create what he can sell so that all of us can benefit. Okay, we've got time for two or three more. We've got Art lined up on the right here. Go on. Going, going back to your first tournament here as an amateur, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, hey, I got in, I have to prove myself that I'm deserving of this, or are you just going out and just playing golf normally? Well, there's a couple things I, I, I realized. One, number one, I had never seen as many, as many fresh range balls that were non-striped. Um, be able to hit those brand new blotto balls I normally would find in creeks and stuff and use in tournaments. Uh, and then come out here and then I, when I shoot 72, 75-ish, somewhere in there, if I can remember. Uh, I was like 17 back of Davis. So there's, I realized that, yes, there is a, there's a disparity and there's a gap. Could I have played a little bit better? Yes, I could probably have played a four or five shots better, but I was not that good. And I realized that I need to go back to high school golf and get better there, get back better at the junior golf, hopefully play in a couple more events. I was alluding to that uh, Mr. Nelson asked me to play in this event. Arnold asked me to play in this event. And so I was getting opportunities to, to kind of figure it out where I need to go. And it, it allowed me to get better in the junior events, in the amateur events. I was able to have more success because I got the chance to experience what I needed to do out here um, and pick their brains and, and watch how they went about their business. Okay, we'll go on the left-hand side over here. Tiger, you referenced Arnie and Gary playing 50-plus Masters. Is there any part of your competitive DNA that would nope. allow you to enjoy? Nope, I'm not playing that many, sorry. But like, I'm sorry. Is, in tournament golf, is there, yeah. you know, you, you <clears throat> reference like the history of the game and uh -huh. the celebration people. If you're 60 and you don't wake up with the irrational belief, I could win this tournament, could you still enjoy any of it? I, I, I don't, I have not come around to the idea of being, if, if, I, if I'm playing, I'm playing to win, okay? Uh, I know that players have played and they are ambassador of the game and trying to grow the game. I, I, I can't have my mind, I can't wrap my mind around that uh, as, as a competitor. If I'm, if I'm playing in the event, I'm, I'm going to try and beat you. Um, I'm there to get a W, okay? So I, I don't understand that making a cut's a great thing. Um, I, if I enter the event, uh, it's always to, to get a W. And I, there, there will come a point in time when my body will not allow me to do that anymore. And it's probably sooner than later. Um, but wrapping my head around that, that, that transition and being an ambassador role and just playing and just trying to be out here with the guys, no, that's not in my DNA. Um, ambassador role and hosting events like this and hosting the, the Genesis Invitational um, or Hero and doing those type of things, I, I totally get it. Uh, but as a player, you know, I flip the hat around and become a player. Um, from a player standpoint, it, yeah, I'm, I'm here to get that W. Okay, we'll take one more question. It'll be Ben right in the front here. Tiger, when people write you off, how much of a motivational factor is that for you? Uh, it used to be early on in my career, yes. Um, but I, think, I don't think that it has been 
later in part of the middle part of my career and, and on the backside of my career, it really hasn't. It was honestly, can I actually do this still? Um, as I was alluding to with, with Doug here, it's just that those back operations were, were tough. Um, that <clears throat> proving it to myself more than anything that I could still do it. Um, starts at home, starts in practice, starts with the guys, starts playing 18 holes, and then come out here and, and having the belief that I can do it. And ultimately, it, it's, it's within me and whether or not I believe I can do it. And um, it's not it's not the motivating, motivating factor of outside. It used to be. Um, it certainly did. Uh, but not towards the, the later part of my career. Okay. Tiger, thank you for the time as always. Yeah. If you're just joining us here on CBS Sports HQ, that is Tiger Woods talking to the media ahead of the Genesis Invitational. Tiger saying, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could beat these guys and win the event. This is Tiger Woods' first start since the 2022 Open Championship. Now, he did play in the PNC and the match in December. Tiger joins a loaded field featuring 22 of the top 25 players in the official world golf rankings, all top 30 players in the FedEx Cup standings, and all 12 winners on the PGA Tour this season are competing. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.